everyone, February is finally over. And contrary to what we hope that it will be better than January, it wasn't. It was worse. I only managed to upload my letter to the month and I only had footage from one day that I went to the museum and it wasn't the best footage. I'm really sorry about that. I'm glad if you watched the video and had some nice comments to say. I also read basically every day, but I didn't make much progress. So I only finished five things in February. And of those things, I only really liked one. So let's start with that. Posthumous Education is the eighth book in the Fred the Vampire Accountant series. And if you don't know by now, I really like that series. As it's the eighth book in the series, let's not go into detail what that is about, but more remind you why you should pick up the series. Fred the Vampire Accountant is following Fred, an accountant who will one day woke up finding himself being a vampire, being completely at a loss and continuing with this boring accounting life. He expected to have a great life and amazing lives, but he noticed, no, you just stay the same. You're just a vampire now and you have to buy blood. So that's the state where he's at when the first book starts and he's on his way to a class reunion and finds that the reunion is attacked by werewolves, if I remember correctly, and that one of his best friends from school also is a supernatural being. So from there on, he gets introduced to more and more supernatural beings. He gets more inundated in the scene. I don't know how to call it, but he's becoming a bigger part of the supernatural world. And it is fascinating. I really like how the series is written. You have a book that is following an overall arch or storyline, but then you have little short stories that tell and work among that arch to the end of that storyline for the bigger arch. Can you follow me? Anyways, with each book, you have these little setups of little short stories that make up a bigger story and each is ended. So you don't have cliffhangers that you have to deal with. You have no stress or drama from one book to the next, even inside those little short stories or stories that are making up the bigger story. You make progress, but you hardly ever really feel at the edge of the seat or you're manipulated in an unnecessarily dramatic way. I really like that. I also like that Fred stays the boring accountant basically throughout the whole novels. His tone of voice, his narration is very matter of factly and always considerate. I like how in that series we see all those different supernatural beings working together and trying to achieve things and there's also some evil going on and some twists and turns and plot changes and there is an evil opponent. Don't misunderstand me. There's a lot of happening in the series and with the characters and how things grow, but it's always so completely different to other supernatural urban fantasy series that I've read that it's refreshing. I really enjoyed it and I highly recommend you try it. I also recommend the audiobooks. They are awesomely well done and I enjoy listening to them. Let's move on to the only other fiction novel I finished in February, which was A Story Life of A.J. Fickery. And this book was highly popular years ago when it came out. Everybody loved it. I never got around to reading it. And now with my goal to read more of authors that I liked books by in the past, I decided to start with this and I was rather disappointed. It's kind of, I wasn't really interested. I was a little put off by the writing or mainly the writing of this one main female character. The story, I'm trying to remember, has all the plot points that are good or things that we tend to like as readers. The main actor is a bookshop owner, the main actor, the main character is a bookshop owner who recently lost his wife, but then by accident, someone leaves the baby in his bookshop or a two year old toddler, and then he becomes a father. And it's about those two being bookish and how they are together. And there's a book sales wrap that the story starts with and introduces us to all the characters, which is kind of weird because then she disappears for a while, but you know, she has to come back. But the description of that character rubbed me wrong the whole time. And also everything else just happened. It has a sort of interesting story plot, but 
I don't know, it, it felt artificial. I didn't feel connected to anyone. And like I said, the descriptions of this sales rep, it's especially always what she wears, how she dresses. She's characterized through her looks as being quirky. I didn't see that with any of the other characters, so I didn't really know why it was there. I also thought that some of the characterizations were pretty cliche and lame and stereotyped, so it works. You know what the author wants to tell you and what kind of people you're working with, but it didn't create a connection I had with them. So uh, overall, I was just left meh with the book. Two other things I finished were short stories by Kaya Shante Wilson, and I've read his two novellas before, which I really enjoyed. And I was hoping for something enjoyable and cozy and really, I don't know, something to grab me by the writing, by the characters after this meh reading experience. And it was okay. Those two stories were completely different. They were set in different places, different times, and completely different also to the novellas. I liked the writing, but I didn't get the same feeling I had from reading the novellas. So if you haven't read them, I'd say give them a try. But if you have never read anything by Kaya Shanti Wilson, I would recommend reading the novellas. First, because they have much more plot, more storyline and more fleshed out characters. Of course, because it's not a short story. I would tell you more about the short stories if I wasn't mixing them up in my head all the time and can't really say what they were about. Me and short stories. I should just stop reading them, right? Maybe. The last book I finished was a non-fiction book and I stumbled across this via the Slow Growth newsletter who had one all about rest and how rest is more than sleep. And we all know that I'm constantly tired and in February I was so exhausted all the time that I jumped onto this test that they had there to see what kind of rest I need. And the test was rather shockingly bad. I am not well rested on any of those seven categories of rest that the book talks about. So I thought maybe I should listen to the book that the test is built upon or referring to. So I listened to Sacred Rest. And while the first part is somewhat interesting on the different types of rest and what they mean for us and how we need all those seven types of rests or categories of rest to feel fully rested and that it's not just more sleep that we need, but it was already having a few more Bible quotes than I think most people are comfortable with. I'm pretty good at taking those, but I thought listening like this is another Bible quote. This is referring to the Bible again. And if you're not interested in any of that, or if it annoys you, you should definitely skip the idea in the book. And the second part was mostly God is a solution, which even lost me. So I'm not exactly sure. I kind of like the idea of those different types of rest. It's like mental rest, physical rest, and creative rest. I forgot all the seven ones. And I am doing the 30 day rest challenge where she sends you a prompt, I would say, or a rest challenge, something to do for every day. I just started today, I got the first one and it's be completely present in whatever you do. I hardly ever do just one thing at the time. So I might be struggling with that one, but I'm curious to see how that goes and hope it will help with the rest a little bit. But basically I just need to stop working so much. That would be the solution. Anyways, working and exhaustion is also part of the reason why I didn't finish more things. The other reason is that I'm listening to a great course, which is 30 lessons and I'm a little bit overwhelmed by it. So I stopped before finishing in February and I'm also halfway or finished part one in the Magic Mountain and that's dragging. It's going a lot slower than I expected. So I read 500 pages of that in February, but I didn't finish it. So I did read a lot. I just didn't finish that much. Anyways, March is going better so far. I'm feeling a bit more rested. I have finished a few more things. So hopefully you will get more content in March and you will also get more books at the end of March that I can talk about. And now I want to hear how your February was. Did you have a better reading month than I did? Did you finish nice things? Do you have good recommendations that you want to share? Have you read Fred the Vampire Accountant yet? 
if not, please get to it. Really, really underrated series for everyone who likes supernatural creatures. There's all kinds of supernatural creatures. So enough advertising for that. Thank you all for watching and sticking with me through all these hard months where there's hardly any videos and good books.